Okay, hey everybody, we're back. One more experiment in our chemistry unit. And this one is called the chemistry of hygiene. And what we basically want you to understand in this experiment is that chemicals are everywhere. Uh, in your cleaning products and in the stuff that help clean you. Trust me, go home today, take a look at your shampoo, your toothpaste, your mouthwash, your hair gel. You're gonna see all kinds of chemicals, both natural and lab made, inside of these cleaning products and inside of your hygienic products. Now, the reason why we lab create so much stuff is because we don't want to harm the environment any more than we have to. So we start to lab create things so that we can get a similar product as to the natural product. But there's still a lot of people who prefer the natural products, me being one of them. And sometimes you'll look at shampoo and you'll see there's nothing but coconut oil and aloe vera extract and things like that that are all naturally made. But in other cases, people just want to get what they want to get. They like the way it smells, the way it looks, they want to dye their hair, they want to do something different. So they get stuff that has lab created chemicals inside of it. So when you're doing this sort of talk, lesson, discussion with your parents, your teacher, yourselves, you want to first kind of like talk about that a little bit. Like what are the ones that you think may have been lab created? What are the ones that you think are natural? Okay. And then go from there. Just give that discussion. And then you can talk about, well, is there anything in my house that has all natural products that I can make a present out of? Maybe a bath salt of some sort. And the answer is, yeah, you can, okay? We're gonna make a bath salt right now using only natural products. We're gonna first start with our friend cornstarch, which we've used in a few experiments already. We're gonna put a cup of cornstarch inside of this bowl, all right? So we're gonna measure it out pretty carefully because we want things to be exact with this. Now, if you know what a bath salt is, you also might have heard of it as a bath bomb before, and that's the stuff that you put in your bathtub that starts to fizz, and salt comes out, and it smells really good, and it makes you relax, all that kind of stuff. You're just gonna make one yourself that you can either use for yourself or give to your mom for her birthday, or give to your dad for Father's Day, or however how you wanna do it. So we're gonna take our measuring spoon, and we're gonna go ahead and measure out one cup of cornstarch. All right, there we go. One cup of cornstarch. All right, you can see right there, we're just gonna put it in the bowl. Next, we're gonna measure out one cup of baking soda. Now the baking soda isn't as sticky, so I just feel like I can just pour it on in. So one cup of baking soda, put it on in. Finally, we have citric acid. That's the stuff that's gonna make it fizz and bubble and do cool things. We're gonna put a half cup of citric acid inside. Half cup of citric acid, in it goes. All right. So we have our three dry products. Now here's where it gets a little difficult in a way. Inside this spray bottle right here, I have put water, mint extract, and blue food coloring. That's so I can give our bath salt, our bath bomb, a scent and some color. You might wanna just open up the top like this and dump it inside. It's gonna ruin your bath bomb. You don't wanna do that. What you wanna do is you wanna take the cap off the top and you wanna spray it in there. What I always do first is kinda of mix up the dry products a little bit, so they're all a little mixed up first, and then you start to do your spray. 
The reason why you don't want to just dump it in is you'll start to ruin all of the so, uh, citric acid inside. It'll all fizz out. And you want to save some of that for your actual bath. So just keep putting it in. You'll notice the pleasant smells and just mix it up with your hand. You don't want to even mix it up with like a spoon or anything. Just mix it up with your hand. And you want to get to a consistency that's kind of like cookie dough. You know, kind of smooshy, but also able to be somewhat solid. So it's gonna take you a little while. You gotta keep doing this over and over. Okay, so this is the consistency you want it to be. Now, the reason why you don't wanna pour all the water in at once, it would never have gotten this consistency. It would have been almost like a soup right away. And it wouldn't have been able to be kneaded together the way it needed to be kneaded together. So what you're gonna do once you get to this consistency, is you're gonna place it in this, what we call a ramekin or a portion cup, all right? You're gonna place it inside there. That's a good little portion of it. And you're gonna put the top on. Now, you gotta wait a little while. You want this to harden, okay? So you're gonna wait like two hours before you open the top up again. And once you have that wait time, or even if you're at school, you might wanna wait till you get home if you do this in the morning or something like that. Once you have that wait time, draw a bath, and go ahead and throw the bath pop in and you'll start to see the chem chemical reaction that occurs, okay? Notice too that this makes a lot of different bath salts or bath bombs. You get a whole bunch of them. So one batch can make about 12, okay? So like I said, it's a good thing. Like if you're, if you're looking for cheap Christmas gifts, Christmas is coming up. If you're looking for cheap Easter gifts, you're looking for cheap Mother's Day gifts or Father's Day gifts or birthday gifts, this is the way to go. Because it's actually something you made and people appreciate that. All right, guys, girls, everybody, that's chemistry. We're going to move on to biology next. Hope to see you when we do that.